Established in 2017 as part of the Migration Policy Center within the Robert Schumann Center for Advanced Studies at the European University Institute, the Migration Policy Center's Observatory of Public Attitudes to Migration, or OPAM for short, aims to enhance understanding of attitudes to migration through presentation, analysis, and evaluation of data from all EU member states. This database aims to uncover not just trends in migration attitudes, but also the causal reasons for these observations. We'll soon look at how this goal is achieved using comparisons between different countries. It should be noted that while the European Union is the primary region that the observer describes, selected countries in the Americas, Asia, and Africa are highlighted when the data is available. Ultimately, OPAM was established with the intent of being an online tool that non-experts can easily analyze and access. This is why the OPAM team completes data management and analysis themselves and simply presents their findings on the online platform. This reduces the time visitors spend searching for their answers. Before looking at what the database can tell us, let's take a moment to understand where the information comes from. The observatory's extensive collection of indicators yields an equally lengthy list of sources. Fortunately, the website clearly displays the data source for any indicator being viewed. So let's focus on the main sources here. Initial figures describing positive and negative attitudes towards immigration come from the Eurobarometer, a large-scale public opinion poll that has been conducted in Europe since the 1970s. Now, to get more specific, OPEM also shows data on how people think about migration policies that should be written. For example, attitudes about the extent to which host countries should allow members of different ethnicities to enter are sourced from the European Social Survey. Additionally, nuanced data on how people view the effects of migration largely come from the European Values Study, which monitors Europeans' views on politics, morality, national identity, and more. Now let's look at accessing and using the observatory. The Migration Policy Center has already put out a brief tutorial video demonstrating how to navigate the online platform, which you can find linked in this video's description. To build on this tutorial, let's take a few simple questions and find their answers in the observatory. Before we get started, let's switch our time period from 2020 to 2018, since this is the most recent year with a rich amount of available data. While we'll stay in 2018 for this video, feel free to select any year when exploring the data on your own. This could be useful for looking at how attitudes have changed from year to year. Here's a good question to start with. In 2018, which country had a higher amount of people viewing migration from outside of Europe as a good thing, France or Germany? To answer this question, we need to look at our list of indicators to see which one is closest to our question. There are six general categories, and it looks like the fifth one, called perception regarding immigration, is what we need. Now, once we look at this category's indicators, we see that they are actually too specific since they look at different parts of life that immigration can affect. No worries, let's back up and try a different category. Since our question is pretty general, Let's see what opinions are under the first category, general attitudes. These four indicators look much more promising, but their titles alone are somewhat difficult to understand. Thankfully, hovering the mouse over the information icon will show you an explanation. We see here that the first indicator shows the percent of people who have a positive or fairly positive opinion of immigration from other EU countries. Now our question is about non-European countries, which would then lead us to the third indicator. Clicking on it will update the map to display positive attitudes towards non-EU immigration. Now we compare Germany and France by moving our mouse over those countries. Germany shows 42.95%. This is the percent of respondents who have positive feelings towards immigration from outside of Europe. France has a lower percent for this indicator. 
so we can conclude that in 2018, Germany had more respondents who positively viewed non-EU immigration as a good thing. A final observation is that the map is color-coded. Countries with a darker shade of blue have a higher percentage for this indicator. Let's take one more practice question, but with more nuance. Which European countries have the most people who think immigration makes their country a better place to live? Well, this question seems to be about the effects of immigration. To be technical, this would be the way respondents perceive immigration's effects. It looks like the sixth category of indicators is where we should look. Indeed, the third indicator in this group is about whether respondents feel that immigration makes their country a better or worse place to live. Answers are given a 0 to 10 score, with 0 being immigration makes my country a worse place to live, and 10 being it makes my country a better place to live. Again, this indicator is color-coded with darker colors being closer to 10 or immigration makes my country a better place to live. We can see then that Ireland has the darkest shading and a score of 6 out of 10. This means Ireland is the European country with the highest amount of respondents who think immigration makes their country a better place to live. Finally, you may have noticed by now that the observatory is primarily focused on immigration rather than emigration. This is partly due to available data. Many public opinion polls in Europe focus on immigration, so that's what's available to analyze. However, we have discussed on this channel before that emigration, or the process of leaving an origin country, generates effects in the places migrants leave behind. What this means is that there is still room for improvement when it comes to collecting data on attitudes towards migration. But the OPAM online tool is certainly still a robust and worthwhile tool to check out. I hope this look at yet another strong migration data source was helpful. Before you go, don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell so that you never miss one of my videos every single week. I hope you'll also like, comment, and share this video. See you next time.